Kroger. Now's your chance. Hey everyone, I'm Johnny, and today we are highlighting five movies that tell the story of real heroes during World War II. Though all five of these productions take artistic license with the real-life counterparts, I think you'll find all five of these heroes deserving of our attention. It's time. Number five, Midway, featuring Dauntless pilot Dick Best. Dick Best was a pilot aboard the USS Enterprise during the Battle of Midway and was known as a highly skilled and fearless pilot. Best is one of the only pilots in history to score a hit on two aircraft carriers in a single day. Best scored a hit on the Akagi and Hiryu, representing half the Japanese carrier force at Midway. Notably, the attack on the Akagi was carried out by Best and just two other Dauntless dive bombers. Best was the only one of the three to directly hit the carrier, with his bomb penetrating the deck causing a catastrophic explosion in the hangar below. During Midway, 145 American aircraft were lost, of which 109 were carrier-based. Ironically, Dick Best would be grounded after Midway due to breathing a bad oxygen mix, damaging his lungs. Best would receive the Navy Cross and Distinguished Flying Cross for his actions at Midway. God damn it, Dick Best! Everyone here knows that you will not fall back! Number 4, Enemy at the Gates. Like Midway, this movie gets a lot of flack for various incorrect details, and if that's your thing, fair play. But what it does best is capture the essence of the slaughterhouse that is the Battle of Stalingrad, bringing attention to the battle for many Western moviegoers. And it does this from the point of view of one of the most famous snipers to have ever lived, Vasily Saitsev. Though Enemy of the Gates often plays loose with the facts of Vasily, this is not totally unfair, as his fictitious sniper duel with the German antagonist Major Koenig can easily serve as an analogue for any of the documented 11 enemy sniper kills he did make during the Battle of Stalingrad. The movie also showcases some often lesser highlighted heroes like the female Soviet snipers that served in the Red Army. Soviet female snipers reportedly were responsible for 10,000 kills during World War II. Commissar Donilov's character is also historically appreciated as many junior political officers certainly fought and died alongside the lesser ranks. The historic Vasily volunteered to fight at Stalingrad and was actually formally serving as a chief petty officer in the Navy before volunteering for a rifle regiment to fight on the front line. During the Battle of Stalingrad, Vasily killed 225 enemy soldiers, earning him the title Hero of the Soviet Union. Give him a shot of morphine and move on. Number 3, Hacksaw Ridge, this time a movie in the Pacific Theatre during the Battle of Okinawa. Hacksaw Ridge follows the amazing story of Desmond Doss, a conscientious objector serving as a medic. Doss was a seven-day Adventist who, at the start of World War II in America, was actually offered a deferment from serving in the military because he was an essential shipyard worker. However, Doss was both a conscientious objector and a patriot and chose to serve his country as a medic in the 77th Infantry Division. Though much of Hacksaw Ridge follows Desmond's character development through basic training, then right to Okinawa, Desmond had already proved himself as a competent and heroic medic before landing in Okinawa. Doss was twice awarded the Bronze Star for his actions as a medic in Guam and the Philippines in 1944. However, it was during the Battle of Okinawa in 45 that Doss really went above and beyond. Doss saved between 50 and 100 wounded infantrymen atop the area famously known as Hacksaw Ridge. Doss was himself wounded four times during the battle, including a sniper's bullet wound to his arm. Doss was the first conscientious objector to win a Medal of Honor for bravery in battle, doing so without ever firing a shot. Doss passed away in 2006 at the ripe old age of 87. I just kept praying, Lord, please help me get one more. When I got this, I said, Lord, please help me get one more. For extraordinary heroism and conspicuous gallantry, Sergeant John Number 2, The Pacific, a miniseries focused on the Pacific Theater covering numerous battles following numerous real-life heroes, but most importantly Medal of Honor winner John Bassalon. John Bassalon was a U.S. Marine who received his Medal of Honor early in his career during the battle for Henderson Field in the Guadalcanal campaign. In October of 1942 at Guadalcanal, Bassalon and the two sections of machine guns he commanded were instrumental in holding off a vastly numerically superior Japanese force of 3,000. Bassalon fought for two days straight until running out of ammo, and with hand-to-hand -hand fighting and the use of small arms, he held the line. After Guadalcanal, Bassalon would return to the States for a war bond tour, and it wasn't long before he requested a return to the war but was denied. After being offered a commission, which he turned down, and an instructor position, he would eventually be granted his request. He returned to the Pacific Theater in time to fight at Iwo Jima. 
At Iwo Jima, John Bastalone single-handedly destroys an enemy blockhouse and leads a marine tank under fire safely through a minefield. You tell that tank to follow me! Bastalone was awarded the Navy Cross posthumously for extraordinary heroism during the Battle of Iwo Jima. He was the only enlisted marine to receive both these decorations during World War II. We're in the wrong position. Protectable position for ambush, sir. And our number one production featuring real-life heroes is none other than Band of Brothers. Though we don't have any Medal of Honor winners here, amongst our paratroopers in the series, we have countless heroes, including their steadfast leader, Richard Winters. Look right with first squad. Winters began the war dropping into Normandy as leader of number one platoon in Easy Company. However, Winters would quickly take command of all of Easy with their regular commanding officer missing in action during the jump. Winters quickly proved his command abilities in combat on D-Day, leading a successful attack with 13 men against 50 Germans defending an artillery position, firing onto the troops exiting Utah Beach. The assault called Brecourt Manor Assault was so successful it became a textbook example taught at West Point. Winters was promoted to captain by July and awarded the Distinguished Service Cross by General Omar Bradley. In September of 1944, Winters, along with Easy Company, participated in the unsuccessful Market Garden operation. However, Winters proved himself an excellent tactician again on more than one occasion during this offensive, particularly with his nighttime attack on a crossroads position held by a German machine gun crew. Later, this would be discovered to be at least 300 German soldiers during the follow-up assault. By December of 1944, Winters would become battalion executive officer in time for the Battle of the Bulge, where the American paratroopers would see some of their hardest fighting. The entire 101st Airborne and elements of the 10th Armored Division, with dwindling supplies, battled 15 German divisions supported by heavy artillery and armor. Winters helped defend the line at Bastogne with heavy fighting near the town of Foy, before finally being relieved when General Patton's 3rd Army broke the German lines. <laughs> Winter's involvement in the war would also bring him into contact with one of the first concentration camps liberated by the Western Allies, which does highlight one minor inaccuracy in the series, which shows the 101st Airborne liberating the concentration camp known as Koffering, where it was actually the 12th Armored Division that reached Koffering on April 27, 1945. The 101st Airborne Division arrived the next day, but it hardly changes their involvement and experience in aiding the survivors of the camp. Winters would later state that the liberation of this camp helped cement his beliefs in the war. In April of 1945, Easy Company would finally get a break from the horrors of war and capture Birch's Garden, where they temporarily occupied luxurious hotels and homes in Hitler's Alpine retreat. Three days later, the war in Europe ended. Hey, Adolf! Love your eagle's nest. I hope you don't mind. In 1951, Winters would help train army rangers and officers for the Korean War. He would live out the rest of his life in peace, passing away in 2011, just before his 91st birthday. You can visit a D-Day memorial in his image at St. Marie du Mont, France. Winters agreed to this statue with the condition that it be dedicated to all junior officers who gave their lives during D-Day. Grandpa, were you a hero in the war? Grandpa said no. But I served in a company of heroes. I'm Johnny, thanks for watching this video. If you want to support my channel, please like and subscribe. Also remember, I'm just an amateur movie fan, not a historian, so please feel free to add to, criticize, or expand on anything in this video in the comment section below.